Mr. White. Ms. Borby. And Mr. Curvis, and we're going to talk about day three. So, um, you should get to a point today uh, where you have two functions on one graph, one that your initial model that you made, and then an improved model that uh, you think is better. Now, an issue that we usually have with students is that when we ask them to compare the two models, you simply just verbally compare based on what you see visually. And what we want actually is a mathematical comparison. So we're going to take you through a mathematical comparison of two functions. And then we'll, t and then we'll show you how, to, uh, how the computer can make the best possible function that you can't beat. But that's a line. That is a line, Ms. Porter. Uh, very good. Oh. <laughs> um, we know that you're dealing with uh, projectiles and things in motion, doing um, curves and stuff like that. We don't want you to just do your project for you. We're going we're gonna to use the same ideas, same techniques, but with uh, linear data. Okay. okay. So our, this one here on the top, y equals 3x plus 1, that was our first decision. And then we looked at it and we said, well, there's only one or two points above the line, and the rest of the points are below. So we changed the y-intercept in our second improved function, and we think that one's better. More points are both above and below, and it still fits that general slope, that general trend of the data. Yours, of course, won't be a, a linear, but uh, we'll walk you through a process to compare these two models. Right. So we think the top one is, was our first, and we think the bottom one's better. We just have to prove it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's pull out our table here. We're going to work with the table for a while. Um, so we're going to go data, new calculated column. We're going to do exactly the same steps as finding the predicted and the differences, and just as the last assignment. So let's go predicted for line one, which is that upper line. Predicted for line one. Ms. Borby? Okay, what we're going to do here is three times. Well, let's, let's we make sure. We want to do sure. a function. Yeah, I just want to show them where this three is coming from real quick. Can you, can you just maybe it's behind the table. Behind the table. Yeah. So it's the y, y, the function's right there in that little box. Our so three slope was three. Times. Times. X. X. Plus, plus one. Plus one. Okay. So there's our P1. Our points on the line with the same X values. And then? Now we want to compare those points on our predicted line to the actual data points. So we'll calculate the differences D1. So we'll call it D1. Make okay. sure in your final project you can copy and paste this table into your Word document or pages and make sure you're defining what these D1s and things mean. So now we are calculating um, Y minus P1 or P1 minus Y. Just make sure that you're consistent. Y minus P1, done. So there's our D1. Okay. You can see that uh, 1 minus 4, 1.2 minus 4 is negative 2.8. Okay, so that's just D's minus, uh, these, the difference of these two columns. And let's do it again for P2, or sorry. Yep, our, P2. Line, so yep. our, our second predicted, this is the one from day two that um, by the end of your homework you should have come up with a second manual fit that you feel is better and justified why you feel it's better. Now we're in the process of proving mathematically why it's better. So we have 3x, and you can see right here the it's minus 1. Minus 1? Do you need a times one. in there? Oh, goodness, Borby. She's on her game today. Minus 1, minus, minus, minus 1. Okay. Done. Yep. Done. Okay, so there's our predicted for the second line. And let's go ahead and find the differences. So D2. So let's go. Now we've got P2. Or y, minus D, y. y minus P2, right? Yep. Y minus P2. OK. So now we are seeing our differences. We need a mathematical approach to figure out which set of differences is closer to the line. The green column or the purple column? So um, if I just add these up, Mr. Kerbis, what's going to happen? I'm going to get a, a problem. And this problem was pointed out also by a student. Uh, I'd like to give him credit, Mr. Alex, uh, from my class. He said, well, if you have a number below the line, that, such as 
negative 1, do you want to bring the mouse up over here, and you have a number above the line, such as positive, positive one, 1, which is here, it. it makes it look like those two things cancel out if you add them, and so it looks like your line could be perfect if you just took a sum. Yeah, if they're equally above and below, they're just going to all cancel out, and it might not be a good line at all. So it could have been just been a coincidence. So we need a, we need a, a method or a technique to make sure that we're accounting, we're not getting rid of values, we're not getting rid of differences. So we need to make these positive some way. And that could mean either squaring them, that would just make them all positive. Mm -hmm. Or, or absolute value. Yeah, absolute value, just get rid of the negative. And, but we just have to make sure we do the same thing, same technique for both of these differences. So let's go data, new calculated column. Uh, absolute of D1, absolute of D1, okay, so go to function, go all the way down to statistics, absolute value of D1, that's done, and then do it again for D2, so absolute D2, absolute D2, and Statistics, again, absolute of D2. Did I do everything right? That looks good. Looks good. Okay, so now we need to add these up. So just by I, again, then this is where students fall down in criteria D, C, and in the portfolios in grade 11. Those numbers, they would look at them, if they even got this far, and they would say, oh, okay, well, the red numbers are bigger, so the blue function's better. But we want to be mathematical. We're going to justify that. Word justify the accuracy is so important if you want to get in that 5-6 band. So mathematically comparing them by creating a sum. So we're going to go new calculated column. We're going to go sum, sum of, whoops, Negative of uh, D, absolute, absolute value, value of D1 yep. right here. So it's a cumulative sum. That's why we didn't get one value. So we add up, uh, where's my, uh, sorry, 2.8 plus 3.2 is 6, and it adds them all up, adds these all up, so at the bottom, the sum of all of them is 52.1. We need to do it one more time. New calculated column. Uh, just leave it as CC, I don't care. Um, you, you guys named yours better in, yeah. <laughs> in your communication. Okay, sum, absolute value of D2. And it's less, 35.9 compared to 52.1. So this is a numeric value that proves that line two is better than line one, which is our whole point. Definitely, cool. So we won't run you through the whole last comparison, but the computer has a built-in function regression. And you can find this by le leaving it as automatic, I believe, right? Yeah, automatic. And then you do a tri-fit tri for... Fit. A linear. Now you're not going to pick a linear. Well, See maybe this? you are if you. But three then you point. Want to so this is this is several significant figures, four sig, sig figs here. We get three point zero six four, negative two point zero seven seven. Push OK. It throws it in there. Uh, you can go ahead and go through the differences and predicted and the sums and all that, the absolute values, and it will actually be less than. Uh, what we have here, which was what 35.9. 35 yeah. Go ahead. We don't have time to do that. You guys can do that for you, but uh, for yourself. So. Excellent. So repeat that l process one more time with uh, the regression, the built-in regression, and come up with some overall conclusions, nice communication, pay attention to the rubric, and uh, we look forward to coming, uh, reading, seeing, marking your results. I guess. You yeah. do? Look forward. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs>